Hello all, this is Chef Harvey from Down on Visa, registered migration agent based in Manila, Philippines. We're talking to you today about Filipino teenagers and Australian family visas. Filipino teenagers, Filipino teenage girls, um, when they were 10, 11 or 12, they were absolutely delightful. Uh, they talked all the time, they were happy 24 hours a day, never stopped smiling and are mostly loving and respectful to parents, that means biological parents as well as uh, step-parents alike. Um, then the biochemistry that goes along as becoming teenagers cuts in, and you wonder where the sweet little girl went. The rebelliousness happens, the sullen moods, the lies and the sneakiness, and of course the boys appear. Save us from teenage boys. If you are... Um, looking at getting an Australian visa from the Philippines for your, for your lovely, lovely lady or lovely gentleman. Um, please, bottom corner there, you'll see the subscribe button. We put this out regularly and there's a wealth of information. So uh, please subscribe, please share this with your partner. Um, benefit to all. And Filipino teenage boys of your own. Now, I don't have as much hands-on experience here with Filipino boys, so I deal with Filipino girls. Um, however, it appears to be much the same, just you know, slight differences due to how boys and girls approach things. The nice little boys, they discover girls and drink and sometimes drugs. The rebelliousness is much the same. Now, boys seem more likely than girls to drop out of school or to fail in their studies because of their partying ways. So what does this have to do with visas from the Philippines to Australia? Teenagers and visas from Philippines to Australia. Again, what does this have to do with visas? Quite a lot. Now we're talking here, of course, if you've taken on a single mum, taken on a Filipino lady who uh, has children of, of, of her own, and uh, those of you who have the, the goodness in your heart to take on kids, well, you know, you, you have a thumbs up from me. Um, you're doing a good thing. Even if it can be a bit of a strain sometimes when they're teenagers, you're still doing a very good thing. One of our early visa applications, this is back in the days when we did a few skilled work visas as well. This was for a Filipino mechanic, um, diesel mechanic, I seem to remember. Uh, I had a wife and I think, I think four daughters. Uh, one of the daughters uh, was in pregnant and I think her mid-teens. She gave birth before the visa was applied for, so fortunately in that case she and her child were included in the visa application. This was back in the days before the government in their gracious wisdom and generosity started charging for including secondary applicants. They were free back then, so having five additional applicants it didn't make any difference at all. Uh, oldest daughter, now she goes off and gets herself married. And she discovers too late that she can't include her new husband in the application. I think, uh, oh, I don't know, I think my suspicion was that he was probably keen on coming to Australia. It might have been, had something to do with why they got married in a screaming hurry because uh, the parents weren't expecting it and we certainly knew nothing about it. Well, end result of that, well, she no longer fitted into the definition of a dependent child. So she no longer qualified, and the husband most certainly didn't, so complete waste. So all of a sudden she was left off the visa application. Uh, I imagine still here in the Philippines with her husband. Oh, dependent child status and Filipinos. Children of partner visa app of, of a sorry, I should say the children of a partner visa applicant must fit into the description of a dependent child. That's the reason by which they qualify to go to Australia because they, the idea being she can't leave them behind because uh, they need her f to survive basically. So it's not just because we miss each other, it's the idea is that, you know, she can include them because they, they actually need her for daily survival. So, and what it means is that the child, a biological child or, um, or a legally adopted child legally adopted, not uh, taking on the sister's child because 
she really, really likes her, um, have to be either a biological child or legally adopted. That child needs to be truly dependent on the visa applicant for their daily needs. The actual words used are wholly or substantially dependent. And daily needs, what that means is food, clothing and shelter. Doesn't mean dependent for iPhones or living the good life. And depending on the visa, for example, the child visa, uh, they may be required for start to be studying too. Uh, either way, it's not so easy to show dependency for uh, an, an 18 year old, 18 plus, um, if they're not studying. So, you know, dropping out to spend more time with the boyfriend, it really isn't helpful at all. Uh, now, the Australian government's issue is they don't want someone tagging along uh, and just attaching themselves to a visa out of a sense of entitlement so they can share in the good life in Australia uh, when they will actually be fine if they're left behind. Uh, this of course clashes seriously with the Filipino wish to keep family close and definitely to share the good fortune. However, the Australian government makes decisions. Um, they make the decisions and there's, if there's an argument, they do tend to win. So, and it's the difference between how Filipinos look upon their children and how Australians look upon their children. Excuse my phone and watch for making noises there. Uh, where are we? Um, so the issue is that if a teenage girl runs off, moves in with her boyfriend, then she is no longer dependent. This applies whether she marries the boyfriend or, or not. This means that, well, if she's living with the boyfriend then she's not dependent on mum anymore to uh, to provide her daily needs because somebody else is. The same thing happens if she gets a job. Uh, she doesn't need mum to take care of her because she's earning on her own by herself. Um, and look, wanting to lead the good life, it just simply doesn't cut it. Again, it's a difficult thing because Filipinos by nature want to share in good fortune. Uh, they win something, they naturally want to share that with those around them and it's hard for a mum to be in Australia you know, with a nice new car and a nice flash house thinking uh, of a 25-year-old daughter who's you know, living in a bed seat in McCarthy or something like that. Uh, but that's just plain reality. Um, I had somebody once contact me that she had migrated years before and suddenly decided that she wanted to look at bringing her kids. And, you know, I know she had a daughter in her late 20s and she was earning 25,000 pesos a month working at a call centre, which by Filipino standards is is not bad pay at all. Um, but mum still sent her money because, you know, she said she found life to be a struggle, so she needed mum to send her money. Um, and remember what I said before, food, clothing and shelter is daily needs. There's no way you could successfully argue that 25,000 pesos a month was not enough because uh, many live on a whole lot less than that. There's no room for, you can't say she's missing out on the luxury that I, I want to give her and she wants to receive so therefore you know you have to let her come to Australia. It doesn't work like that. No room for luxury um, and you know it certainly, it certainly can't say she couldn't cope. So no chance at all I had to say. Sorry. So yes, if your son or daughter ceases to be dependent and they can wreck the whole thing, uh, you can be, have been planning to bring them and then all of a sudden they do something stupid and uh, all of a sudden they're, they're out and they will not be included. Um, so your issue is that your Filipino wife or Filipino fiance is going, is going to take this very badly because yeah, of course she wanted her family to remain together. Rebellious teenager and Australian visas. This is the most common scenario. Far too common, excuse me. This is a Filipino teenage girl who doesn't want to go to Australia at all because she met the love of her life in a skinny and pimply young man who has plans of taking her virginity if he hasn't done so already. Uh, if you tell her she's going Anyway, because it's for her own good, she may well run away. Again, that sweet little 11-year-old who never stops smiling, she's a thing of the past. It's 
been replaced by the estrogen progesterone monster. Parents are her enemy, especially her mother. The Filipino teenage boy doesn't usually run away. I don't know what it is, but the ladies seem to go a little bit softer on them and seem to let them get away with far more. Uh, he can't get pregnant. Uh, however, he has his bodicardas, that's his mates, uh, and he doesn't want to leave them behind if he comes to Australia. He's not so moody like the teenage girl. He's far more sure of himself because he's a macho party dude, don't you know? <laughs> no girl can resist his charms. And you need a bulldozer to shift him into action, into doing anything. We've had occasions where parents have signed up for Junior for a child visa and he just literally hasn't done a thing and they've ended up just giving up because he will not get off his backside and do a blooming thing. So. Uh, yeah, you can face things like that. Um, so when it comes to visas, what happens? Very, very little. And there lies the problem. A rebellious teenager knows everything and knows that their hormone-ruled world is all that matters. What their parents want for them is not part of their world at all. The parents commonly say, you're not thinking of your future. And they're not. They're thinking about right now. Or the weekend is the future. That's what they're thinking about. Girls are in love, and love is everything. The boys are lazy, and they like their lazy life, which will surely be that much sweeter when mum isn't there to nag them so much. You know, Lola, grandma, she's a whole lot easier to deal with. So Filipino teenagers and Filip visa application solutions. Look, I wish there was a simple solution. Uh, I wish it not only for readers and clients, but I wish it for myself. I had three teenagers, we, we take in uh, kids basically. Um, we have a house full of kids who are you know, relatives, relatives' kids. We do our best to provide them with a better life here and uh, you know we've had a few occasions where it's, it's failed miserably. Um, we have three teenagers go off the rails at age of 15 and ran back to the province. Uh, only one returned. Um, I just had two more reach the dreaded age of 15 and so far all is good um, I believe so uh, I believe we've done a fine job with them and they seem to be quite stable but uh, so you know they're still here then mostly good kids they have their moments but they're mostly good kids uh, I have one at 14 that's a I do worry about um, a kid I have less influence over in that particular situation she uh, she's an orphan, she grew up in Samoa and she doesn't really have much of an idea what families are about so but still you know we try. Um, the five younger ones we have here who also need to get past the scary 15 and thankfully a few more years so we've got quite a few years thankfully of uh, sweet little girls until uh, until they until the hormones hit them and they change. Uh, the immediate and obvious issue is that they cease to be dependent by making dumb decisions, then they will never get a visa. Australia fairly graciously, I might add, lets you bring kids as far as partner, as part of partner visa applications and on separate child and dependent child visa applications. Uh, they just need to be truly dependent, which I think it is fairly reasonable, personally and professionally. I have very little patience for economic refugees uh, which include those relatives who want to slip in the door of Australia because they feel entitled to their share too. Um, if your previous depend previously dependent Filipino kids become independent then they have really blown their chances. They can't just suddenly regain their dependency. They've shown that they can live by themselves well then they can continue to do so. Uh, if they toss away a chance to be included at a in a visa at 15, um, they think met the man of their future in a high, in a high school boy and local basketball hero called Jolma or something, that, that's really tragic. Chances are Jolma will run off with another girl in, in six months or worse. Uh, maybe he stays and they have babies together. Uh, the chances of a wonderfully happy life ahead for her are very, very slim. There's a very good chance she will regret it later. Um, same thing will happen when with Mr. Happy Go Lucky. If he misses out, he will in time discover how 
tough life can be, but, but that will all be far too late. So, what do I suggest? Well, once again, I can only speak for the girls here. Um, I find young Filipino males very hard to talk to. Uh, I'm quite lost, actually. I have nephews and communication is pretty non-existent most of the time. They rarely look up from their phones anyway. Maybe I should send them messages. Uh, my experience has been to keep communication up. Talk freely and encourage them to talk freely. Don't be permissive, but don't be so strict that they feel they can't talk to you. I think that free communication between Filipino kids and their parents, especially teenagers, is fairly non-existent in most families. Parents bark orders, but otherwise largely leave them to it. Kids seek advice about their problems and important issues from their school friends. In fact, most of them, you, you ask them how did they learn about how babies were made, they learned it from their silly school friends. This is how you get teenage girls going. Oh, everybody told me yeah, you have to do it 10 or 20 times before you can get pregnant. I didn't know I could get pregnant doing it once. Now yeah, that's from talking to, their, talking to their silly friends. So this is the type of relationship um, is it, that your Filipino wife and fiancé has with her kids. Well, I wouldn't expect you to have too much success and nature will take its course regardless. Uh, sorry, but it, it is true. I mean, you need to be... You need to be a team when it comes to things like this. You need to be united. So, a bit of a struggle when you're trying to be the good parent by yourself. Um, uh, we also have a practice by which we know where our kids are at all times. They don't just roam around. If one goes to a friend's party, we send another child along knowing that they will report on the other um, if there's a slip up. Um, we drive them to places, we pick them up. They don't roam around unsupervised. Uh, if they've got a project at school to work on, well, their friends can come to our house and work on it. Very little opportunity for, for boyfriends and baby making around here. Uh, I also find that those kids, Filipino or otherwise, who know their own value are far less likely to seek approval from others. Um, a girl who knows she's loved and worth something is far more, far less likely to be swept off her feet by a teenage Casanova. Uh, build their self-esteem and let them know that you love them regardless and that you're proud of them. Um, if there are more smiles and hugs and kind words and less criticism, anger and punishment, um, that's much better. Uh, they will really hate being on your bad side. That's what I find. Uh, their life is good and then they do the wrong thing and they're in the bad books of, with us. Uh, they don't like it. But if you scowl at them and find fault, regardless of what they do, then there's no incentive to do the right thing, is there? Not much at all. And you as a new dad, you need to understand that they're probably pretty scared about this new world that we, they'll be venturing into. So reassurance from you, plus more importantly, making sure they do have a proper relationship with you, um, this is pretty essential. Uh, don't plan to get to know the money after they arrive, or it may not happen at all. And just remember, they need a dad, they don't need a, another school chum, so just make sure you, you take you take that role, cause, because that, that is what they need. Uh, now, if you do all that and you still have problems, well, consider um, a really good change of scenery um, to another relative they can stay with somewhere else away from their silly friends and from lecherous teenage boys. Or how about you include them in a tourist visa to Australia earlier? Uh, and consider your visa choices anyway. If you plan on applying after the partner visa and then being away from mum for a few years, uh, if they're going to go off the rails now, it'll probably be way too late by then. Thank you very much.